And so tonight, I want you to sit for a few moments at the feet of the world's greatest teacher. In most American universities and colleges, they have what is called required courses and elective courses. Now, in life, there are certain required courses. What are they? There are three. Three required courses and three elective courses that I want you to think about tonight. The first required course is life itself. Philosophy means the study of life and ideas concerning life. And one of the most discussed new books published last summer was The Philosophers, in which 20 of the most influential philosophers of the Western world in modern times are psychoanalyzed as to the amount of fulfillment that they themselves enjoy. And it, it, so demon, it demonstrated that all 20 of them that they studied were characterized by loneliness and anxiety. You see, we did not choose to be born. We were not consulted about living. And there's nothing you can do to stop living. We did not choose where to be born. We did not choose what color of skin we have. There's no escaping life. Oh, you say, I can commit suicide. That doesn't get you out of life. You only kill the body. Your soul, your spirit is eternal. It lives on. So you cannot escape by suicide. Suicide does not end at all, as some people think. Yes, you're required to live. How do you face life? What resources do you have to call upon when the pressures get great and the crisis comes and the difficulties come? What do you have to call upon? Well, if you know Jesus Christ, you don't have anything to worry about because when he lives in your heart, he gives great inward peace and joy and assurance and a sense of safety and well-being when you come to Christ. It affects you physically and mentally and socially. Every way, every phase of your life is affected when Christ dominates your life because you let him come as Savior as well as Lord. And then the second required course that you have at the university, you're required to die. Now, we have been having a lot of studies on death lately. We read about Dr. Kubler-Ross and Dr. Rawlings and Dr. Moody and others and courses on thanatology in our universities are springing up all over the country teaching people about death and the classrooms are filled with students studying death. George Bernard Shaw said that there's one statistic that we can be sure of. Now, everybody in the gaming business here in Nevada ought to hear this. The odds against which no gambler can win, that one out of every one dies. Now, that's a sure thing. God said to Hezekiah, thou shalt die and not live. The Bible says it's appointed unto man once to die. The Bible says there's a time to be born and a time to die. The number of years is simply relative. The fact is we all die. And the Bible says there's a day, there's an hour, there's a minute already appointed for your death. It may be tonight. It may be tomorrow morning. There's a day, there's an hour, there's a minute already appointed. The Bible says in Job 14, seeing his days are determined, the number of his months are with thee. Thou hast appointed his bounds beyond which he cannot pass. There's a moment beyond which you cannot live already appointed. And God is giving you this moment of grace right now to find Christ as your Lord and your Savior. That's the reason the Bible always says today, 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 harden not your heart. Now is the accepted time of salvation. The Bible is saying don't put it off. Tomorrow is the devil's word. Come while you can. There's only one man in history that didn't have to die, and that was Jesus Christ. He said, no man taketh my life from me, but I lay it down of myself. I have power to lay it down, and I have power to take it again. This commandment have I received of my Father. He was perfect. He was free from sin and its effects, and yet he died on the cross. Why? Because he died for you. He took the things that caused death in your life on the cross in your place. He died for you. God laid on him the iniquity of us all. And now tonight, you come to that cross and surrender your life to Jesus Christ, and God says, forgiven. Your sins are forgiven. I forgive you. I write your name in the book of life. For he hath made him to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. But not only did he die, he rose again. He's alive tonight. 
who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification.